Hello and welcome back to Open Table Adventures. As always, I am Dan the Baker and we are back here today with Recipes for Adventures, our series where I make a little recipe based on some amazing TTRPG content from across the internet. Today, the recipe I am bringing you today is based on none other than Total Party Chill. And it was such a hard, long, grueling process to figure out what I was making for Total Party Chill. But finally, I decided that I'm going to make pizza. I have no idea where I came up with that idea. Total Party Chill is a San Francisco-based TTRPG studio specializing in the production of actual plays, of gaming news, of TTRPG game shows, and of tabletop gaming products such as the 5e gaming mat and the learn to play dice. Here's the thing, I got a one. Oh, That's what you rolled the one on? That's whoa, my weapon! Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Over the last seven years, Total Party Chill has been driven by its mission to bring about innovative TTRPG content and products to inspire enthusiasm in gameplay. Now, since Total Party Chill is such a grab bag of content with a meshing of genres and play styles with a revolving door of games and players coming through, I thought it best that we make a big party pizza with enough toppings for everyone to enjoy. But before we get started on this pizza journey, I thought we should talk to a pizza expert. Hi, Dad. Oh, Daddy, no! Daddy? Oh, oh, sorry, it's just a reflex. Uh, so now They're I'm, getting lamer by now minute. I feel bad. Hey, Dan, I'm So, Dad, you've been making pizza for over 20 years. You're the person who told me how to make pizza. How did that get started? How did I learn to make pizza? Well, I grew up in Connecticut, very close to New York City, where there was always excellent pizza. When our family and I uh, relocated to Myrtle Beach, the first thing we noticed was that the pizza here was terrible. Um, so there was, there was no good pizza anywhere close. Um, so as time went on, um, I met um, a gentleman who had uh, been in the pizza business up in upstate New York. and. I had mentioned to him if he ever wanted to, you know, open a pizza place down here in Myrtle Beach that I would, you know, love to help him out or be a part of it. So not more than a month or two later, he called me and said that he had found a spot. He wanted to open a place um, and one thing led to another and he and I opened a, a pizza place um, and he taught me how to make pizza. So um, I have to thank Tony for that. Um, and we were in the pizza business for about 15 years. I remember growing up in my parents' restaurant, making pizza dough and pizza sauce. And, you know, it's really what got me into the love of cooking and the love of baking until I, where I am today. So I really appreciate that. And in your expert opinion, what do you think makes the difference between a good pizza and a great pizza? The difference between good pizza and great pizza starts and ends with the dough. Um, you obviously have to have good ingredients and quality ingredients all around. You know, your cheese has to be good and you know, the sauce has to be good, but um, if you don't have a quality, good tasting dough, um, the rest of the pizza just, there's nothing you, can, you can't make up for not having a good dough. And what would you say is the secret to making the perfect pizza dough? In order to make the best pizza crust, um, your dough needs to be made from high gluten flour, um, it should be made at least 12 hours before using it uh, and proofed in a um, refrigerated space in a sealed um, container of some sort. Definitely has to be airtight. You can't get any air in there because you'll get crust um, on the outside of the dough ball um, that, again, cooks a little weirdly. Um, so you definitely have to do it beforehand. Um, our pizza crust was very simple. It was flour, water, yeast um, and oil um, but if you go through that pro and salt excuse me if you go through that process of making it the day before letting it proof for 12 hours in a cold airtight container um, then you should get a pretty good result you've had a lot of pizza over the years but what would you say is your favorite pizza you've ever had the best pizza i ever had was from a place back in Connecticut where I grew up. There's a place in New Haven, Connecticut called Pepe's Pizza, and they are um, year after year voted the best pizza um, in the country. Um, 
It's a thin crust pizza cooked in a 100-year-old brick oven. Um, and they make a fresh clam, garlic, and bacon pizza um, that is to die for. Um, that That is my favorite pizza um, ever. Um, other than that, I'm pretty much a traditionalist. I love just cheese and pepperoni. But the clam pizza is something different. Um, that um, if you ever get a chance to go up in New Haven and go to Pepe's Pizza, it's the best around. Thank you so much, Dad. All that information was super helpful, and I'm sure with that on our mind, we can make this pizza amazing. Now let's get started. I don't know if this is atomically correct, uh, but you hear a pop sound. Ah! So the first thing I wanna do with our dough is to activate our yeast. To do that, I'm gonna take our yeast and mix it with some sugar and warm water. Now I'm just gonna let this sit for like five minutes and just until the yeast gets nice and foamy. This just ensures that the yeast is active and will get us the best result for our dough. See you in a sec. Uh, yeah, you know what, okay. If you're gonna try to like jump around some other things, uh, it'll be a 19. That's better than 20. <laughs> that's, that's. <clears throat> is it Phil? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like objectively. Yeah, I mean, it's better. So our yeast has foamed up and it even has that kind of yeasty, almost fermented smell to it. So we know we're good. Next, I'm gonna add the flour. Now I know that this is the exact amount of flour I need, so I'm just gonna add whatever's in this bag. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt and give that a quick mix. Next, I'm gonna add some oil. And I'm going to slowly add the rest of my water. I don't know if I'm gonna need all of this or I might even need more. So that's why I'm gonna add it little by little, mixing in between. You might have to go in with your hands a little bit just in case the spoon's not working out. Obviously, if you have a mixer with a dough hook attachment, that will work as well. I don't, I'm broke. Send me money, please. I really hope the mic is picking up all this sound because it sounds disgusting. Okay, so I think I've added all the water I want. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this out onto a floured surface and knead it a little bit. And I just wanna knead it until it kind of forms into a ball and is much less sticky. And at this size, you could probably actually cut this in half and make two smaller pizzas, but I'm making a huge party pizza, so I'm using this whole dough for one pizza. You can get a little rough with it. Uh, pizza dough can handle it, it's resilient. It's like a toddler. Don't do this with toddlers, please. So there we have it. We have our little dough ball formed. Now I'm going to wrap this up and put it in my fridge overnight. If you're really in a pinch, you can maybe uh, go for like three to four hours, but I really recommend if you want the best results overnight because then you'll have a nice, well-developed dough and it'll taste so good. So I'm gonna put this away, but luckily with a little bit of magic, you guys don't have to wait at all. It's, uh, I'm a weak man. <laughs> and uh... Well, with an attitude like that, of course you are. <laughs> We're back. So it's been a little under 24 hours and our dough is looking gorgeous. I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Let me get the pan. So I'm using a pan instead of like, doing this on a pizza stone. One, because I don't have a pizza stone. And two, I wanted this to be a big, like square rectangle pizza. I just poured a little bit of oil onto the pan. I'm just going to brush it all around. This will help make sure that the dough does not stick to the pan uh, and also helps get it a nice crispy edge. Okay, so now I'm going to take our dough, put it right in the middle, and then just with my hand, kind of massage it into the edges. You wanna, you can get some oil from the pan to put on your fingers just to make it so that it does not stick uh, to your fingers. Now I'm working with gluten-free dough, but if you're working with like regular flour gluten -y dough, uh, you're gonna be weary of your dough snapping back because that's gluten uh, stretching backwards. Uh, if that is happening, you want to just uh, take a second, let your dough rest, and then you can go at it again. Let that gluten relax, uh, and then you should be able to stretch a lot easier. Okay, so our dough is spread out over the entire pan. Next, I'm going to take some garlic butter, which I made just by melting two tablespoons of butter and then grating a clove of garlic. Uh, and I'm just going to take my brush and brush it over the surface. This will just add a nice garlicky flavor to the whole pizza. So now we're just gonna let this dough sit out at room temperature for about 25 to 30 minutes. 
Uh, we just want it to puff up a little bit more, get that yeast active again. I'm gonna put it on top of my preheating oven just to give it a little extra help. While we're waiting on that, we can make the sauce. I need one of you uh, to, to prick yourself with this pin and drop three drops of blood into this cauldron. I have minus one constitution. I can't be doing stuff like that. <laughs> to start with our sauce, I have here a jar of tomato paste. Since I'm only making, you know, one pizza, I'm only gonna add a small jar. I don't wanna add too much, um, but this scales really easily to larger sizes. And then kind of just using the can as a measuring cup, I'm going to add an equal amount of water. Give that a quick whisk. And to that, I'm going to add some sugar, some garlic, black pepper, basil, oregano, crushed red pepper, and Parmesan cheese. Now I'm gonna mix this all together. And let me get the rest of my toppings so that we can assemble. So our crust is ready. You can see that it's puffed up a little bit. You can, uh, if you push your finger in, you see it holds your finger indent. That's the word. Uh, which means it's ready for us and it'll make a nice crust. So let's start with the sauce. I'll just take a ladle full to start with. Just kind of spread out. And then just using the bottom of the ladle, I'm going to spread out the sauce. A little bit more. I'll probably need all of this, uh, but you know, we'll see. Um, I'm spreading out almost to the edge. I want to leave a, you know, a little bit just so you have that crust that you can hold on to. The crust is my favorite part, which is controversial, I know, but I'm a controversial figure in the history of man, I suppose. Now that we've been sauced, it's time to make it easy breezy, nice and cheesy. I'm gonna start with a layer of grated Parmesan. Then I have here a ball of fresh mozzarella that I'm going to just tear with my hands and sprinkle on top. Ignore the chunk missing out of it. It came like that, I promise. Now I like a ton of cheese, so I'm going to really cheese this up. Uh, but truly it is your prerogative how much cheese you want to add uh, or how much cheese your probably lactose intolerant stomach can handle. Now I also am gonna add some of this like pre-shredded, uh, you know, came in a bag from the grocery store cheese. Uh, I'm adding both this and the fresh mozzarella because I like the stretchiness that we get from the fresh mozzarella, but this pre-shredded, I feel like browns a lot better. Um, so you get a nicer color from it than the fresh. I'm not sure why. It's some chemical they put in the cheese to make us gay, I'm sure. And speaking of chemicals that make us gay, it's time to top. I'm gonna cut that, I'm gonna cut that. So I'm planning on dividing this into eight separate slices and I want each slice to have their own topping. Uh, because, you know, like I said, this is a roving party of various styles and people. So I want something that everyone will like. And if you're keen-eyed, you'll be looking at all these toppings. They're like, damn, there's only seven. Well, one of them's gonna be just cheese as always, there's someone who only likes cheese. But for the rest of the slices, I'm gonna do pepperoni, sausage, bacon, red bell peppers, red onion, white onion, and mushrooms, which are my personal least favorite topping. So I will not be eating that slice, but that's fine. I'm gonna go uh, back off on my, uh, my own little quest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. What, what quest? I'm looking for hallucinogenic Mushrooms. Oh, ayahuasca? What's ayahuasca? And uh, no, we are not going with the white clam pizza, which is my dad's favorite, because I don't think I have to tell you why. I'm just gonna take a little bit extra of this shredded cheese and just put it right on top, because once again, I really like cheese. And also it'll help kind of glue everything down. Now I'm going to take this, put it in my oven that I preheated to 400 degrees and let it bake for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown. See you in a sec. And there we have it folks, our fresh out of the oven party pizza for total party chill. Roll the glamour shots.
watching this episode of Recipes for Adventures. Make sure you check out Total Party Chill. All the links of where you can find them are down below. And make sure you stick around here at Open Table Adventures for more recipes, actual plays and one shots, interviews, and so, so, so much more. As always, I've been Dan the Baker. This has been Open Table Adventures, and you are always welcome to pull up a seat. Bye-bye.